Howdy y'all, I'm Round the Wheel, you're watching Uncle Roundy Cracks a Pack, and today we've got a Zendikar Rising set booster, but first I've got kind of a little story to tell, and it's a little bit long and winding, so if you don't want to hear it, if you just want to see a pack get cracked, you can skip to a timestamp that I'm going to put into the description, but I've, I gotta say this first, this is something I just want to get out there. So, the first two packs in this series came from my local game store, I was getting some car repairs done. And my LGS is about a mile from the shop where I was having those repairs done. So each day that I was having the repairs done, I just walked down, milled around for a little while, and then walked out with a pack. And uh, and then, you know, it became the segment you're seeing now that I've been planning on doing for about two months or so. But for the most part, packs that you will see on this channel, like this one, uh, came from Target. Uh, I work an overnight job. And I usually stop there before work for food and drinks to get me through the night. And usually when I'm there, I will uh, also pick up a pack, you know, as a little small indulgence. And uh, I also, I stop at that Target, and I also used to work at that Target. So I'm there last night, and I'm perusing. And a young woman I used to work with, there, I saw her there. And she saw me browsing, and she asked me, uh, are you finding everything okay, you know, as Target employees are wont to do. And I was like, you know, I'm fine, you know, I'm, I'm here for magic, you know, the selection is fine by me. And she said, well, if you, have a, if you have something more specific that you want, there's more in the back that we're not putting out right now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I have heard about that, because they had a sign out that limits customers to buying three packs of trading cards at a time. I've, I've seen other targets are limiting it to one. I guess it depends on sales volume. Uh, I don't know if Walmart's doing that because I haven't stepped into a Walmart in a hot minute. Um, but so I know about the limiting of that. And because it's because trading card, there's a, there's a couple reasons. Uh, one, sports cards are having kind of a boom moment right now, and Pokemon cards are also going nuts. And I, I mentioned that. I was like, yeah, I, I, know, I know what that's all about. Uh, Pokemon is going bonkers right now. I've seen that. And she tells me, no, you don't even know the half of it. She told me someone actually put a GPS tracker on our vendor's car. Now, I don't use a lot of coarse language on this channel these days. I try to avoid it. But there are some things that just don't call for anything else. And so I'm just going to say it. How fucked up is that? Like, you're putting a Spidey tracker on a guy's car so that you can run up to him and harangue him as soon as he gets to the store? And just, and just get everything that he or she unloads as soon as they, as soon as they like get it out of their trunk or what? Like, what are you doing? Like, my brother's son recently got into Pokemon because he got the McDonald's Happy Meal with the promo pack in it. And the cards got him interested in the game, and he's been learning it and playing it. Uh, he's seven. He's having a blast learning and playing the game. But you can't get Pokemon cards anywhere. Because you have all these neckbeard douchebags buying things up, flipping around, buying every pack and box in sight. Because... Logan freaking Paul came down from the mountain and proclaimeth, yea, verily, Pokemon cards are cool again. It's like you're, you're, taking, you're taking the product away from people who actually want to play it. And that is really annoying and really douchey. Anyway, story over. That's just kind of something I experienced. A GPS tracker on a vendor's car. 
Like what kind of what kind of Mission Impossible Ethan Hunt loser do you are you? Like <sighs> irritating. Anyway, here we are. We've got a Zendikar Rising set booster. Uh, I wanted to get a Zendikar Rising set booster to compare it directly to the Call Time set booster that we got last night. Because I think I like opening Zendikar Rising set boosters better. Set boosters were actually introduced with this set back in October of 2020. And Call Time set boosters... They're okay, you still get all the good chance at rares. And I actually have hit the mega jackpot of getting four rares out of a Kaldheim set booster. And there was a list card in that pack. And it was a sliver. Oh man, that was a that was a day. But Kaldheim set boosters, I kind of generally know what's in them. I I I generally know the contents. And the Wizards of the Coast website can also generally tell you the contents of the pack. But with a Zendikar set booster, it is so tightly structured that I can tell you everything that's going to be in this pack at every step of the process. And I really like that. And there's something really comforting about it. So I want to do that breakdown. Like, with the with the Kaldheim set booster, I can be like, yeah, I know the art card's going to be up front, and then you got your land. It could be a dual snow land, or it could be a basic snow land. I don't know what. Uh, but the Zendikar Rising set booster is a product where I have more of a handle on uh, exactly what's going to pop up and when. And I just want to go through that today. Of course, this is a set booster, so we do have the 25% chance at the list card. And we're going to crack this baby open. We got another list card. Holy cow. Two list hits in a row. That's that's not too shabby. So this will at least be a somewhat fun pack. So in the front of a Zendikar Rising set booster, we have our art card. And there will be a 5% chance that this art card will have a gold foil stamp signature. Art cards don't hold much value, except the, uh, the signed ones can get a little bit up there. This one is not signed, and it's a very pretty... Looks like Wasteland, I think, is the... Is a thing. I think that's an. I think I've pulled this one recently. Actually, this is an Adam Paquette thing. I think. Next card is going to be the land card in a Zendikar Rising pack. It's a full art land card, and there's a 15% chance that it will be a foil. We didn't hit that chance, but we did get a nice one. Yeah, Wasteland by by Adam Paquette. Very. I like the vertically oriented ones too. They're cool. Uh, really fun to use as bookmarks, actually. So we got our nice little, we got, we got Bread Bowl Island here. That's, that's cute. So next, slots three through nine, we are going to have, uh, a combination of six commons and uncommons, and it could be anywhere from five commons and one uncommon to all six of those slots being uncommons. Uh, the most common, the most common distribution, I believe, is four uh, four commons and one sorry four commons and two uncommons so we're going to count that out right now we've got one common smite the monstrous uh we got uh, wow wow five uncommons and this is a good set booster so far relic vial pretty pretty sweet card right there as long as you control a cleric rare relic vial has uh whenever a creature you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one this will be I would love to build a sacrifice deck sometime for Commander, and this would be a pretty cute little component for it. So, wow, yeah, we're, we're about to hit a huge run of uncommon Spring Mantle Cleric enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. Little, little rainbow card there. Grow Tag Nightmare. And see, the color variety is also better. Like, we've gotten a white card so far, a green card. Now, this one is red. Uh... Kaldheim set boosters are much more themed in terms of color. Uh, and this, like, you get a little more variety, I have found, out of C. Look at that. Like, a black card, Scion of the Swarm. I mean, I have enough of these that I could probably sell excess bulks. But, like, but still, like, the, the variety is there. Here's... Yeah, a, a white, a green, a black. We hit the whole. We hit the whole rainbow here, like just in the front with the uncommon slot. Like, pretty amazing. Wow. Okay. So the next slot, I believe. So this is. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I think the art card counts toward the contents of the back, but I can't remember. Um, I believe the next slot is going to be, well, let's see, hold on. Uh, art card, uncommon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think the next slot is going to be what they called like the fireworks slot, which is where they show off a mechanic that they were excited about for the new set. So let's see if that holds. Yeah, this is the, so the, the thing they're excited about here is the, uh, the, uh, these are called cassette lands. They have a spell on one side and a, and a tap land on the other. So this is the fireworks slot. Uh, there's definitely a lot worse things that could have showed up in this slot, like the party mechanic. Uh, so we got that going for us. So the next slot I think is just going to be two wild cards of any rarity. Uh, they could be common, common. It could be rare, rare. Like you can get up to four rares in a set booster. Let's see how we do here. Uh, yeah, see, here's a common, uh, might of Marasa. Uh, this might be, this may be the fireworks actually, cause it has a kicker cost, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Two commons here. Another green reclaim the wastes with another kicker. Uh, no, <laughs> no real fireworks. I don't think anybody really gets too worked up about kicker costs these days. But uh, here we go. We got, I think we're going to be getting to the rare now. Shadow's Verdict. Two black, three colorless, a sorcery. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield and all creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. What the? <laughs> oh, black. You so silly. So what's going to be our... So now coming up is our guaranteed foil, which is a common to Zeme Raptor. Well, that pack got significantly less exciting in the uh, when you get to when you got to the slot that really mattered. But for a while there, it was kind of exciting. Nice, nice little rainbow. White cards always seem to have really good foiling. I like the I like the effect here. And we did get a list hit. So what is that gonna be? Olvenwald Mysteries. Looks like it's from Shadows of Innistrad. Green plus two, an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. That means to put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with pay two mana, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token onto the battlefield. Well, not the most exciting card. Okay, yeah, this pack ended up really falling off in the close. Uh, it was kind of exciting for for a minute there with the five uncommons, but uh, and uh, and but see that that's that's the thing. Like that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to compare the Zendikar Rising set booster against the Kaldheim set booster, which was that yeah, this one was for a minute there way more exciting, uh, and then just like the Kaldheim one, it just kind of fell off into nothing. But but we did get a list hit in both cases. I think I like this list hit a little bit better. Uh, this one, this one gives me a, a raging, throbbing clue. But so yeah, there we go. Another pack open. No. Whoa, golly. Oh gosh. I just kind of discarded that card into nothing. That was wild. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Olvenwald Mysteries. I kind of like that list hit a little better than the other one. But uh, I hear my name being called. I'll see you guys next time with another pack or something.